Listen to what it says in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What does this mean, these words that Jesus spoke and said? Exactly what Jesus said. That God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believeth. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He didn't say to Nicodemus, whosoever pays his tithing, whosoever obeys the Sabbath day, whosoever goes on a mission, whosoever is married in the new and everlasting covenant, whosoever goes to the temple, whosoever wears their temple garments every day, whosoever fulfills their calling, whosoever, whosoever, who, he says, whosoever believes on him, that God loved so much, uh, this world so much that he sent him. It means believing in him, the real him, the incarnate God, his words, his promises, his identity, his methods, his person, who he is, his promises, like I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Me alone. That's the focus. That's the belief. Stepping back and to John 3, 14, we read, Jesus says to Nicodemus himself, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That whosoever believeth in him, Jesus says, should not perish, but have eternal life. What a beautiful, comforting passage. The LDS Articles of Faith says, however, we believe that through the atonement of Jesus Christ, all mankind may be saved by belief. No, the Mormons say by obedience to the laws and ordinances of the Mormon gospel. Okay? Jesus says himself, whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have eternal life. And, uh, but the Mormons say uh, salvation comes through obedience to laws and ordinances found in the Mormon gospel. Jesus reiterates the point in verse 16, which we come to as we commented last week when he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He reiterates this point again. And Jesus says, whosoever believeth in him, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But I, I have in my collection of Mormon propaganda, an LDS tract called The Purpose of Life, printed in 1983, which has the subtitle in the tract, You May Earn Salvation Through Christ. You may earn salvation through Christ. Do you believe Mormonism and their pamphlets and their propaganda and Joseph's teachings and the Articles of Faith or Jesus? Verse 17, for God sent his son uh, into the world to not, excuse me, I'm sorry, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through him might be saved. The LDS have this strange sort of, again, schizophrenic understanding on salvation or what being saved means. On the one hand, they say salvation is a free gift. And what it means is resurrection is the free gift. And that's what being saved means. This is one way that missionaries and doctrines will define salvation in the Mormon church. Uh, and it's passed on to all men. When a person uh, is once resurrected, where they go, however, is dependent upon their works. So that's one way they define salvation. Then they have the article of faith that reads, we believe that all mankind may be saved uh, uh, by obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. So in this sense, they equate salvation to obedience to laws and ordinances of the Mormon church. Then they have their Book of Mormon teach uh, that being saved says, we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all that we can do, after all we can do. So in the Mormon church, they have three definitions that float around in terms of what salvation is and being, what being saved is. One says being saved is the free gift of being resurrected. The second one says, you can be saved by obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. And the third one says, we are saved by grace after all that you can do. Uh, but listen to what Jesus himself, remember, Jesus himself 
said in his dialogue with Nicodemus. Notice how often he uses the word believe or believeth here in verse 18. Jesus finishes his dialogue saying, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Salvation by grace through faith on him. Jesus Christ, God incarnate, the great I am, no other way or means. 